Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. Apologies for my voice, I've got a cold, as you probably be able to tell. So, I've got a conclusion for the Wingsland, so I'll explain what's happened. So, I couldn't get this into GPS lock, or I thought that was the problem. So what would happen is, when it would take off, it would be a very erratic in the air, it would move around all over the place, and it wouldn't settle. So I tried it, and I tried it, and I've tried it about four or five times. So eventually I went onto Wingsland site, and if you go onto Wingsland site, they still have support for this, and you can download the firmware updater for this drone. So I downloaded the firmware updater, and the latest version, they have a version 15, that's what this comes with. But on the firmware updater, on the tool, once you've got it connected, so you don't connect the battery, all you do is connect your USB micro, USB cable into there, that goes to your PC and you turn your transmitter on and it powers the drone and it sees your transmitter. So when I went to the transmitter to check the settings to make sure everything was calibrated, uh, I can show you on the sticks, it's better to show you, so it thought it was that was centre and it thought that was centre. So the thing was never going to hover. So I recalibrated it, took three times to get it, so on the screen it showed me all the sticks were in the middle and eventually I got it there. So I got it calibrated, I took it quickly in the garden, took it off and it hovered. Fantastic, put it back together. So I've waited for a day that wasn't too bad. It's very grey today but at least the wind's not horrendous and there's no rain. So I've been taking it out again. So what do I think about it? Uh, it's quite easy really. So I pride myself on my channel being honest. I'm honest on this channel whether people like it or not. If people send me stuff to review, that's fantastic, and I do get stuff sent to review, I'll review them honestly. If I don't totally think it's very good, I'm going to tell you. If I buy it with my own money, I'm going to tell you the same thing. So I paid for this, this wasn't sent to me. And all I can tell you is, if you've ordered this on for £200 on pre-order, you might be a bit disappointed with it. Because sketchy is the best way to describe how this thing flies. When you get a GPS drone and you let off the sticks, it's going to stop fairly quickly. Normally within, I don't know, 2 or 3 metres max. This thing is taking 10 to 15 metres to stop when you let go of the sticks. That's how bad the GPS is. It's also telling me it's got a GPS lock of 7, which allows it to take off because you'll get the blue lights on the top when it's at 5. That's the most I could get. The same day I've flown another drone, which you're going to see in another review, I had 20 satellites and I flew another one straight after that, a toy grade drone that was 50 quid GPS and I had 19 on that and this is giving me 7 and I'm guessing that's half the problem. The other thing it does, when I flew it was my own fault, I didn't charge the battery up so that's why the flight footage you're going to see is only about 2 or 3 minutes. When it gets low LVC gets in, it just lands, wherever it is. Luckily for me it was in the, it was only about 10 metres away, but it will just land. It will come down, none too smoothly, and land itself. You're not going to get a precision landing or anything like that with this. The return to home worked, but it was at least 8 metres out when it returned home to me. 8 metres is quite a distance. If you're in a space, if you use return to home, I'd make sure you're in a 10 metre square. Or take back control of the drone or whatever you want to do, but I'll let it return. So, the controller feels average at best, even now I've set it up better. These buttons on here are very old fashioned the way you have to toggle between modes. The camera doesn't seem that bad, I've got some more camera footage. The camera doesn't seem that bad at all. So, I cannot recommend this. At 135 three or whatever I paid for, I can't even remember, the 130 something pounds I'd possibly recommend it if you want something but make sure you've already flown before you need to have a bit of an, not advanced flyer but certainly this cannot be your first drone never in a million years if, and for 200 pounds, no, it's a, it's a no, no brainer for me I wouldn't go near it so, I'm going to leave you with the footage coming up this isn't the last you're going to see of this drone, so I was going to just cut my losses on it, but I decided, yeah, I'm going to cut my losses on it, but I'm going to strip it in bits. So, I've had a quick look inside here, and I'm going to remove the GPS unit and the control unit, and I'm going to put a NASA M in it. So, if you know about NASA M, then what came out a few years ago, basically it was in a Phantom, up to a Phantom 2, and I'm going to put the NASA inside it, and I'm also going to put an FR Sky receiver 
and fly it on my Tavarnith. And that I'll hopefully have that done in the next couple of months. I'm in no rush to do it, but wet days probably it'll be my project. That way I can still use the camera because the camera's 5.8 gig, so it's not connected to the control board apart from the gimbal movement. I've had a quick look, and the same attachments are on the NASA, so I should be able to connect that straight up. The motors and speed controller will connect straight away. And the only thing I'm probably going to have to do is mount the Nazar outside. So I'm probably going to put a nice little hole in the top of here and bring the puck through for the Nazar. So you probably will see it on the channel again. But it it might look like a Wingsland, but inside it'll be very much DJI Nazar. So, bit all I can, about all I can say about it really. It's a bit disappointing. I expected this to be better for the money to because it's now £200. It was £450 or something crazy like that. I'm going to leave you some footage. You'll see it hover. It's got a decent hover to be fair, but the problem with a decent hover is if you're hovering when you've taken off, that's fantastic. But if you've been flying along and you let go of the sticks and expecting it to hover straight away, that ain't going to happen. It's going to move all over the place and it eventually might settle down. So I'll leave you some footage. I'll leave you some footage from more footage from the camera. Like I say, I can just tell you what my opinion is. If you bought one of these and you want to mess with it and you've got it for 130 odd quid, yeah, I think you've done all right because you can, if, as long as you can fly, it's probably as cheap as you're going to get. You probably can't get anything else for that kind of money. Or go buy yourself a Tekken and Phantom too because I have seen them going for around 150 quid with a GoPro. So much to bear in mind. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Okay, so this is the quick footage you've got coming up from the Wingsland M1. Uh, like I said in the video, there isn't much footage, there's even less than I thought because the GoPro stopped recording at some point from the head cam. So you haven't got that much footage and I haven't bothered putting that much flight footage in because you'd already seen the footage the other day. And like I said in the video, I've no intention of going and flying this again because uh, it's a really big letdown. But you, t you make your own mind up. The video doesn't look that bad, I don't think. Uh, but you make your own mind up and see. Thanks ever so much.